everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to my latest episode of New Album Spotlight. This is the show where I put the spotlight on a new album that I've discovered that I'm really loving and I want to share with you guys, uh, recommend it to you and, and see if you like it based on my description. I would strongly encourage you check out these albums on your own and support the artists. That's always what this is all about. And today I have an album that's very much not in the typical lane that I tend to occupy. Usually I'm very much focused on progressive rock. That's usually my bread and butter and the music that speaks to me the most. But I have an album here that really is not in progressive rock at all, but actually in the genre of bluegrass. This is Nickel Creek's record Celebrants, and I've just been itching to talk about this because it's really captivated me, and I just really love this record, and I feel like if it's an album I love, I should talk about it, and it shouldn't matter what genre it is. Good music is good music, right? And it's probably going to place high in my top albums of the year ranking, and so I wanted to make you guys aware of it so it makes sense uh, when I eventually put it on my list of favorite albums for this year. So, And I think there is a bit of a progressive spirit with the band. I think they do things a little bit more experimentally than a lot of other bluegrass groups do, so I think there is a progressive spirit to what they do, even if it's not your traditional progressive rock that I usually talk about. So Nickel Creek, getting a little bit of that background into them, they're an American bluegrass group consistent of Chris Thiele on the mandolin and Sarah Watkins and Sean Watkins on the fiddle and guitar respectively. They're all vocalists. They do these incredible harmony vocals together. They were somewhat child prodigies on their instruments and have been around for quite some time and basically went on a bit of a hiatus for some time but then basically reunited for a recent album that was from 2014, A Dotted Line. So this album is is kind of a second reunion of sorts after A Dotted Line came out in 2014, so nine years later we've got Celebrants. It features also Mike Elizondo on bass, so you've got bass in that mix too. So basically the instrumentation you hear is the mandolin, acoustic guitar, fiddle, and then you got some bass as well. So that's really the, the composition here, and you've got incredible harmony vocals from the three, the trio, and it's just an incredible sound, and it really is this organic sounding music because it's all these acoustic instruments and it just sounds really clean and pure, and I really enjoy that side of it. But I feel like they've really pushed the boundaries a little bit with this record because the earlier records were maybe sitting a bit more in that contemporary bluegrass style, a bit more conventional sounding, with some experimentation I think that they were doing, but I think they really embraced that even more so on this record, which really dabbles into things like folk music, indie rock, you know, things of that nature are really baked into this and create a really fascinating stew of great music, and it feels like a very cohesive album. I feel like their earlier records felt more like different collections of songs put together, but it really seems like they crafted this as a particular album with a particular track listing that runs all the way through and tracks kind of lead one from the next. So it feels almost conceptual in nature and it's just a really, really incredible statement by the band. And you could almost confuse this in part like a, a progressive folk album, you know, something along the lines of what the Decemberists do or something like that. You know, maybe they don't utilize electric instruments and have that rock sound that I'm typically drawn to, but it's just so beautifully composed and really expertly crafted and really intricate and has a lot of technical playing abilities and they're really playing off of each other and it just it really has an interesting and incredible soundscape for me that I really enjoy. So going through some of the track, there's a lot of tracks here so I probably shouldn't go every single track. Uh, there's 18 tracks on the record but many of them are shorter and uh, bridges to other tracks. There's a couple instrumental tracks as well. I really love the opening of Celebrants. The, the opening track really introduces their three-part harmony vocals and the trio uh, instrumentation on those acoustic instruments. Bouncy and fun, but a little bit of this kind of characteristic dissonance in the mix, which I think is part of the theme of, of the album itself. Is there's, there's moments where they really have this dissonant sound, but it still is pleasant sounding. It still is really characteristic of who they are but I think they're introducing this as an element in what they're doing 
that in order to find some beauty, I think you need some dissonance to balance it out. And I think this album really plays with that throughout the record. Uh, in fact, Nickel Creek even said on the meaning of this album, this is a record about embracing the friction inherent in real human connection. We begin the record yearning for and pursuing harmonious connection. We end the record having realized that truly harmonious connection can only be achieved through the dissonance that we've spent our entire adult lives trying to avoid. So I think that's baked into the sound of the record that yes, there's harmonious beauty throughout the record between their playing styles and their vocals as well, but there's also this hint of dissonance. And I think that hint of dissonance really brings an added character that makes this album even more special somehow. And so it's a really cool conceptual thing that they're doing. Uh, Strangers was their first single from the record and really showcased a great side to the band. It was really what started getting me excited about the record. Some great acoustic guitar playing and vocal harmonies. A bit of an indie folk vibe to this track. Really balances all the lead vocalists well. And I love the mandolin and violin or fiddle bringing a lot of character to the song. It's just really beautiful. The Meadow is a really sweet song that Chris Thiele takes lead vocals on. Really adds a classical kind of sensibility to their music, which is another aspect to the group that I really like, that they add this almost classical style to some of the violin playing that really brings a lot of beauty to it. Thinnest Wall is a really cool track that Sarah takes the lead on. Has almost a jazzy flavor. I almost feel like this has a New Orleans swampy jazz feel mixed with their typical bluegrass. Going Out is, is a really cool instrumental work. Really a work of art with some beautiful acoustic guitar and fast mandolin work. Uh, the fiddle really adds uh, an element of beauty to the proceedings and there's some light vocal harmony in the background, you know, vocalizations and stuff. Where the Long Line Leads has more of that traditional stomping bluegrass sound with Sarah's strong character driven vocals on it. Goddamn Saint is just a really beautiful track. One of the highlights of the record, it's kind of the centerpiece of the whole record with some classical sounds and Chris's vocals on top. Beautiful melody with some dissonant instrumentation on mandolin, fiddle, and guitar. Settles in a light place with some gentle plucks and beautiful vocals and builds up with some swells and some of that dissonance in the mixture really bringing added character. It's also reprised a little bit later in the record as well. To the airport is another beautiful piece with some great harmonies. There's a really cool acapella section where the music drops out and you just get focus on their vocal harmonies and their blend and it's just a really beautiful transcendent moment on the record. Uh, I really love Despite the Weather, which comes after just a beautiful instrumental piece that really leads to some great moments, some highly precise and immaculately played sections, delicate and beautiful, another highlight moment with some swells of strings and some joyous melodies. Just really love that. Hollywood Ending is a beautiful track, maybe one of the more straightforward bluegrass tracks with some pop elements in there. Uh, New Blood is another great track that really blends some high octane bluegrass styles uh, before you get more of a dissonant section. It's a really cool blend between those things that they're working for on the record. And I like Failure Isn't Forever that ends the record on almost a uplifting note with some uplifting mandolin picking and Chris's vocals that characteristic bluegrass and pop mixture that they're known for and a tinge of that classical feel in the fiddle playing. So it's just, it's a beautiful record all in all. I didn't really give it justice. There's so many great moments throughout the track list. And what I really love about the band is how each member gets a chance to shine. Chris Thiele and, and Sarah Watkins and Sean Watkins, they're all incredible vocalists. They take lead at different points on the record. They're all involved in the writing. They each have spotlights for their instrumentation. They're all experts at their instruments. So it feels very even in how they're featured. And I think that's really a strength for the band that there's no person out in front being the star and taking all the spotlight away. It's just a very evenly matched group that all contribute in such a fascinating way to create this thing that's that's really an incredibly special pairing between all of these things. So I really love this record. I think it's an amazing record and really worth checking out. If you have any sort of inclination towards this bluegrass style or just curious what this might sound like or like maybe some more experimental progressive folk type stuff, you know, and you're willing to go out on a limb, it's just beautiful playing, beautiful harmonies, great melodies, they're just really playing at an expert level 
And even though it's not the genre I tend to love, I'm just always celebrating really great creative music that has a progressive spirit, even if it's not rock music, which is usually the foundation of what I like, but there's just something magical and beautiful about this record that I had to spotlight. So hopefully you enjoyed this review and it gives you some idea of what to expect for the record. Thank you guys so much for your support and for joining me on this review, and hopefully you'll stick around on the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, it would really help out the channel. I give really cool recommendations, hopefully, to a lot of interesting progressive new records coming out. So thank you guys so much, and I'll hopefully catch you in another video. Bye, everybody. As we drove